Well, we have a fly that's uh, moving around quite irritatingly and um, it speaks to this theme of home. Uh, when I was living at home, one of the very important sanctuaries was to create a, a contained area where I could let down my guard and just be in my own space. And so, you know, I had my own room, I put a lock on the door. Uh, when I left home, I had my own room at uh, Kyle Morton's. Uh, when, uh, when I re-entered the United States after living in Canada, um, I rented a little uh, apartment and from that point onward I've lived alone um, until the last year when I've been married. And uh, the, the, the places have kind of grown, meaning I had an apartment, uh, then I bought a house, then I built a house, then I built another house. Um, I briefly moved in with my first relationship partner only to discover uh, that I was being bullied, uh, not, you know, not excessively, but um, very much so left with the choice to either have regular conflicts and fights or do everything, uh, you know, in my partner's preferred style of living. and that didn't feel very good. And the, the awareness that I had as I entered romantic relationships, um, I had begun my first relationship as a long distance relationship where we would visit each other. And uh, what I noticed about that was the quality of the conversation. In a good long distance relationships, I'll spend about three hours a day on the phone with someone. And then I'll spend maybe another hour writing emails, preparing gifts and poems, etc. So it'll be about four hours of quality time uh, a day. Now this conversation, this poetry, this note taking is uh, far superior than to the level of conversation I'll have with the same person living together. There's something about being apart that stimulates awareness. And uh, so in all of the different configurations, the most conscious version of this was to be about 20 minutes apart, or the ideal version would be to live 20 minutes apart so that it takes a noticeable effort to go visit one another. However, it's not a deterrent. When what this means basically is that you have to think daily, uh, who do I want to spend time with today? And I have to make an effort and I have to come up with a reason. Uh, or I have to notice, gee, I don't want to see my partner today. And then the question is, hmm, what's going on there? Because um, We've enjoyed each other this day, this day, this day, and this day. Why not today? And it asks a question, a question that can only really honestly be asked when you are living apart. Because if you wake up every morning next to your wife and say, do I want to see my wife today? It's less likely to get an honest answer because you have to see them today. And so it's not a very polite question to ask or to answer uh, because, well, what, what would you do if you say, yeah, I'm not really that excited to see you today, so go, go leave the house, or I'm gonna leave the house because I'm not excited to see you today. Um, and then it's like, well, what's wrong? Why are you being rude? But if you're living apart, this same question brings enormous, uh, you know, enormous nuance to the level of intimacy and awareness and are we growing closer, are we growing further apart? So it's a really great question uh, to ask and answer on a daily basis. Um, when, 
when I moved into my present house, uh, which I rent, um, I had the option to divide it into two places. However, I've always chosen to, to make more money and rent a full house to myself uh, so far because um, it just takes about an extra day, maybe an extra maybe an extra day's work of profitable work to rent the whole rest of the house. Uh, on the other hand, a roommate or a conflict, etc., can you know destroy a whole job? Um, can you know weaken a, a client relationship with distraction and various things like that? So uh, it seemed easier to make more money and pay for a whole house than it would be to fix certain interpersonal conflicts that might come up um, in any timely manner. And so that you know that was that equation. Then the other thing is. Um, there are a number of erratic energy flows that run through my life. One of them is sleep. For example, yesterday I stayed up until 5 a.m. Um, and then slept until 2 p.m. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons that I'm able to live with my wife is she's very quiet until I wake up. And so, you know, that flow uh, is one of the flows. Today I'm going to bed much earlier and will wake up earlier. But I'm making this video in a, in a, in a silent house at 2 a.m. And um, all I have to do is think, let's do a video and then do that as opposed to someone has to turn down their music, um, you know, someone else has to get out of the way or something like that. And, and so it's that kind of freedom, um, you know, popping in and out of the hot tub, making a video, writing a book, having a long conversation, um, and not, you know, so that's one kind of, kind of flexibility. But the other thing is I have energy ebbs and flows. Uh, I've laid basically on the floor for days at a time. Uh, and, you know, just felt too tired to move and, and didn't want to be disturbed. Um, I felt intense waves of grief and pain and didn't want to talk to anyone for days at a time. Um, and the idea of having to kind of worry about making small talk, one. Two, that all of these things people take personally. I know they're not personal, um, <clears throat> but other people always take my behavior personally. And so when I'm done with laying on the floor for a few days, when I'm done with my staying up all night, when I'm done with completely ignoring someone, then I move into the counter position. You know, everything seeks a certain balance. And so I may move into a more frenetic, you know, uh, period of activity, uh, might become incredibly present with someone and want to talk for, for three or four hours. Now, the, the trouble with trying to, to, to merge these swings, you know, with other people that are happening, um, you know, rather rapidly from one extreme to another, is that they have residual impact. So if I completely ignore someone for three days and glare at them if they intrude, and then on the fourth day, I flip into being really interested in them. That's a very natural pivot for me because I'm following the inner pendulum, the inner flow. But for the other person, it's like, oh, you've been ignoring me when I want to talk to you, but now you just suddenly want to talk to me or I don't know when you'll change and stuff. And so that's very difficult to regulate uh, the impact of that if we're together all the time. But if I'm living alone and just don't invite anyone over when I'm lying on the floor and then invite someone over when I'm really interested in connecting, um, they don't feel jerked around. And really the, the desire to connect is not very personal to them, meaning if I want to connect, I really enjoy connecting with a number of 
you know, a good percentage of people in that mode. And if I want to lay on the floor and ignore everyone, that's not personal either. I want to do that. Uh, or my body just can't move. Um, and I feel, you know, exhausted and just understand that rolling with that uh, is going to be the best way to stay in balance. You know, that if I collapse on the floor and, and uh, you know, just lay there, that that's what my body needs to do. And so I just lay there. If I want to watch, you know, Netflix or want to listen to audible books or just want to lay there and meditate, then that's what I do. Um, and it's hard to predict these cycles. Um, and it's hard to change them. It's hard to predict them. It's hard to change them. Um, so making plans is very difficult. And so if I, if I make plans, usually I like to make them like one day in advance um, or the same day. That's kind of ideal because then I know what's going on. Uh, I don't have to pretend I know what's going to be going on for me two weeks from now. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, that, that this all ties in to kind of the, the choice of a home. Um, I live, and one of the reasons I chose this house was both neighbors are at least 30 feet away. And so there's some real buffer, you know, there's 30, 40 feet away, you know, on both sides. Um, no one on the uphill side, no one on the downhill sides, and this, you know, and the side neighbors are far away. Now, that allows me to play loud music at two in the morning. It allows me to do rage kind of cleansing. You know, if, if I notice that I'm out of my body and there's a lot of fear and a lot of anger and stuff there, then I can, you know, make, make, make shapes that dissipate that energy and make whatever sound dissipates that energy um, and not worry too much about how that's going to land for other people. Again, I trust that, you know, that kind of stuff is healthy and integrating. Um, but in our culture, where nobody really knows each other, nobody wants to know each other. You know, this is, it's, it's, it's very dissociative. Um, my uphill neighbor um, is still in a tizzy because I didn't like some piece of art that I bought from them uh, where I commissioned an art piece and I didn't quite like it and so they've been you know very actively uh, you know avoidant for years since just no I don't particularly like that art apparently you're supposed to say that you like the art even if you don't um, and then, uh, you know, the downhill neighbor is, is, uh, is, is very conventional in a number of ways. And I, I'm guessing that some aspects of, you know, of my lifestyle alert them accurately that I'm not terribly conventional. And so that seems to be a little uncomfortable for them. And so nobody really knows me, uh, which means that you know, if I'm screaming, they have no idea. Am I am I uh, torturing someone, or am I dissipating anger in an energy efficient manner? You know, there's there's no alert in the neighborhood. I'm dissipating anger in an energy intensive manner, making these types of sounds that seem to capture capture the energy or something like that. And and this really strikes me as sad because you know I feel a sadness that we don't cooperate around intimacy and all kinds of things in our culture. We just don't, we don't see, we don't, you know, we're not seen, we don't understand. It creates a certain amount of fear of the unknown. Um, you know, and, and I noticed in the same reverse, if I walked by someone's house, um, and heard someone screaming, I wouldn't know what to do because I'd say maybe they're like me, um, you know, releasing a, a little charge and coming back into their body, or maybe they're beating their child. I have no idea. Should I call the police? Should I not? I don't know because we're this culture of secrecy. Um, now, in choosing to have my wife live with me, um, you know, the, 
you know, the I'm quite particular about how I live in my home. Um, and so first we lived together for six months in Thailand in a very tiny apartment. Um, and I thought, well, if we can do well living together for six months in this little apartment, we can certainly manage in a house. My wife is quite an exceptional uh, housemate in a, you know, in a number of different ways that makes her one of the easiest you know, people to live with. Um, I'm aware that with my particularness, it may not always be healthy um, for her to kind of bend to what's going on for me. Um, because I've lived alone my whole life and, and uh, you know, it's, I have the lease on the house and I've lived here for 15 years. And so it kind of feels like it's my house that I'm inviting her into. Uh, and so there's always the option that, you know, she, she can, uh, you know, two, we have two kind of space holding options around that. One is that she can always have her own apartment um, if she wants it. Uh, two, uh, we got her a, 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 a nice tent um, so that she could camp on the deck if she ever wanted to. Um, uh, three, uh, I can always go traveling uh, for a month to leave the space, you know, with her to do her own thing. Um, and that you know, there's an awareness that a certain amount of space is often healthy. Uh, but most of the time, uh, my wife Jen wants to be close to me anytime uh, that's available. And so, you know, when I suggested going to Thailand alone recently, she didn't like the idea. Uh, so I stayed here with her. Um, I do think a certain amount of independence is good, even if that's not actively desired, just because it creates a sense of missing. Um, I noticed that when Jen and I were separate, she would write about 300% more in depth and share more intimate things and words than she does, you know, when, when we're living together. Uh, and I miss that. Um, and so, you know, the, those are, I guess, important pros and cons of living together or living separate. Um, one of the things that I have a lot of empathy for is uncommon people who don't have the resources to create a completely independent space for themselves. Because, you know, this whole system of going through my various flows works for me. And I get praised for publishing one or two books a year, for being highly creative, for being able to make money, being able to sculpt my own life. I get praised for that because I have my own space, my own house, and I have enough of what this culture values in a human being to be able to pay for all that. Uh, and I run my own business um, so that I can just, I, you know, I take six months of the year off to do a whole variety of different things. And so I can kind of integrate very loosely with these different rhythms that are part of who I am. But these same rhythms would see me getting fired in any nine to five job. And they would see me being you know, deeply resented as a housemate, um, you know, if I, if, in, if I was having a room in a house. And it would see me feeling incredibly frightened of these intersections between my rhythms and what's going on in the rest of the world. Uh, and so, you know, I'm just aware that, you know, every person is different to one degree or another. And that there is an optimal environment that brings out the best in that person. And that some of us are fortunate enough to have the best brought out in us because that environment is provided and, or is creatable. And others of us are doomed uh, to you know, be equally valid as human beings 
but be but find ourselves in the exact opposite location meaning to find ourselves in a home in an environment that brings out the worst in us one two that we are then punished and judged as being our worst selves because if an environment brings out the worst in us that's what people see as the worst and so they they say you are that person you're the worst but if the environment brings out the best in us then that's how people assess us they say wow that's so amazing you did this this and this um and so it's it's uh it's not very fair in that sense um you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have some of the, the t skill sets and talents that our culture uh, values. And so I can roll with all that. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and so that's my relationship with home. I mentioned, I think, the evolution towards, you know, delegating a lot of home maintenance to a, uh, a home care provider. Um, which is really nice so that I can enjoy the home and not feel bound by its chores. Um, my home uh, at present involved a little bit into a crystal sanctuary. I have literally two tons, metric tons, of crystal in and around my home. Calcite, large geodes, quartz, uh, altars, small crystals, giant two three hundred pound crystals um you know giant spheres all kinds of different crystals tumbles and in this way um you know i i've picked crystals as as my primary art i would say and then i've lit my house through crystal so for the most part i don't see direct light in my house what i see is light filtered through various types of crystals and so, uh, you know, that, that's a very soothing and beautiful environment for me. And, uh, you know, I, I, I like it. Um, I love crystals. I like that they're an appreciating asset. And so they're kind of, a, in a certain sense, an investment. Um, and uh, there's, there's something I enjoy all the time that are, you know, incredibly low maintenance. You don't have to water crystals or... Uh, transplant them or weed them or something like that. Uh, there's just periodic dusting. So, uh, and because I have quite a sensitive, I guess, personality, the outside environment affects me a lot and other people affect me a lot. Uh, what I've done with my home is created an environment that brings out the best in me and that way when I invite people over to my home they see the best in me because my home brings it out meaning I can't stand having TVs in the background so there aren't any in my home um, I can't stand uh, you know trying to talk right next to another people who are having a different conversation so my house is completely silent you know um, I love to cook and love inventing recipes and I have special allergies and stuff. So I have all that food, you know, ready to cook, you know, right in my home. And so my home is, I would say, what sets me up to live with grace, to enjoy life and to win, to have the very best brought out in me so that I can share that with others. Um, you know, it's, I have a very irritable uh, side to my personality, meaning I can feel incredibly irritable and impatient, etc., when I'm being overstimulated. But that's not a fun part to share with other people. You know, come and look at how irritated I am with you. It's not very fun to invite people into that. But come and, you know, listen to the way that I can connect with you like this and like this and like this because I'm in an environment that makes that easy. That's a nice gift to offer. Thank you.